Welcome back. Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Thursday. It's a beautiful, it's a cloudless day almost. Crystal clear blue skies. Actually, I'm driving through Bedford right now. I was, just heard uh, uh, Fort Rome Sports Grill. Yeah, make sure you stop by there. Great place to catch a game, join with friends, uh, part of the Wild Club. Uh, make sure you go to uh, and uh, sign up for the Wild Club. Apple App Store, Google Play Store, easy to do. Proud sponsor, Value Athletics, and Indiana Sports Beat. Uh, there was a piece by Bob Kravitz, a uh, good friend of ours who joins the show, Dustin, uh, on The Athletic, that it wasn't really an article, but it was he just pieced together quotes from four guys, uh, Dean, Dean Smith, Jared Jeffries, Joe Hillman, and Dad Gonnett. Who was the other one? I told you earlier, now I'm forgetting. Um, man. I forget. But anyway, it was basically talking about what does I you have their man now uh, after going through the years of wilderness and but mostly purposely and forcibly staying away from Bob Knight, uh, protégés, coaching tree, that stuff, all of that. Um, and now that is flipped course. And I ironically Indiana is also heading back to being Indiana. But um, I saw some comments earlier. I don't have the uh, story pulled up now, but uh, Indiana is certainly going in the right direction. They're going in a direction they haven't gone in a long, long time. The recruiting is, is, is came around before the NIL was hitting, but I think NIL is only going to help Indiana because they have jumped out and Hoosiers for good is a, is a strong – in basketball, I'd say Indiana has a strong NIL program as anybody, um, and there's more stuff coming that they're going to be announcing um, that I think people are going to like. But it's 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 certainly to me, it looks like it's going in the right direction. You've got a team this season that is going to probably compete for a Big Ten title, um, and that was always I think uh, Bob Knight's first um, goal of the season. You know better than me, John. But uh, the Big Ten title was the, was what they focused on. Um, and John, I mean, you you were there. Was why was the Big Ten title the first focus? I think it goes back to when Knight played on the Ohio State team, 60, 61, and sixty two, and that was uh, always their goal. And in those days, only one team made it to the NCAA tournament. And so you had to win the Big Ten Championship or you didn't get to play. And uh, he carried that over into the 70s. And then in the late 70s, it finally stopped where you didn't have to win the championship to get to the tournament. So that, that's how it all began. Uh, Joe Hillman, I think I mentioned him. He was definitely one of the guys on there. But he, he cracks me up because you would think Joe Hillman was born in Seymour or Newcastle or any – some some Indiana basketball hotbed town because he bleeds Indiana basketball. He's a California kid, kid, of course. He came here, played on the 87 team, but he is as IU as IU gets. And uh, a lot of questions. He was not a fan of that they went away from everything that Indiana had been about and had done. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of stigma and negativity, but I think you could have gotten – away from the negativity without just dumping everything. Uh, but they're back. I, I think they are back going in the right direction. And I, I think that they're going to stay that way into the near future because of, of how the, the college landscape has changed. Um, but man, I think about this and whew, not that it matters because I don't think it's hard to compare people to different generations, but boy, oh boy, how would Bob Knight be in this generation? Uh, John with NIL stuff. I know he would just absolutely hate that. Yeah, that's uh, you're exactly right, Jim. That's uh, that's not something he was concerned about. He was about the education, about getting your degree, and he really hammered that to the guys and, and, and they all did that. Uh, because in his day, in the 60s, was, that's how you were going to be uh, stand out from the crowd. And now, when the 
NBA is paying so much money, uh, that's not true anymore. I can get a contract in years in the league. He doesn't have to wor- worry about working again. That's his money well. Yeah, I hope he can get a uh, in the This may be one of the moments where Jim cuts back out, uh, depending on where his route is down there on the drive. So hopefully he'll be able to join us uh, yeah, back. Yeah. But as he was – there he is. Now he's back. Yeah. I just saw that the NBA is going to be playing the ABA players. Uh, I mentioned that yesterday. So that's cool. The ABA retired players are going to get some money. So that's very cool. But uh, yeah, Indiana back to being Indiana. And I think that they are back there, Justin. That yeah, I think there's I, they're heading in that direction, and I think you saw that again. I, I go back to you know kind of what happened with everything at that Northwestern situation and how it kind of all unfolded. And I think a lot of time at that time, a lot of Indiana fans were scratching their heads, saying, "Oh, here we go again. This team still hasn't quite found its groove. It's going to take Mike Woodson a little bit longer." But after that, they were able to to rally, um, and they were able to win some key games down the stretch. They were able to get. Um, to the semifinal round of the Big Ten tournament. They were able to finally snap a long losing streak to Purdue. They were able to beat Ohio State and beat a really good Illinois team. So I think that, that there's, a, there's good indication that Indiana right now is heading in the right direction. I think that goes back to last year. Look, to get back to the NCAA tournament, to be competitive, to win a game, even though it was a first four type of game, to win, to get that experience – I think is it, it, it gives you an, an immeasurable amount of confidence heading into next season compared to where this team was. And I think that the recruiting only adds to that to be able to add some key pieces, to add some five-star talent, to be able to recruit from the transfer portal and to get so many key guys back from that team. I think that the sky's the limit. For, I shouldn't say sky's the limit. I don't know that they're a national championship contender, although you get the right matchups in the NCAA tournament, you, you're headed to the final four. I do think that along with with teams like, you know, Michigan, depending on what Hunter Dickinson can do, I think with Illinois, I think Indiana is going to be one of the top three or four teams in the Big Ten this season with a chance to win it. It's going to be interesting to see how that translates to the NCAA tournament, what kind of areas, what kind of development. The one thing I've talked about a lot, Jim, on this show is there's going to – to me, there's going to be some serious – Uh, evaluation on what Mike Woodson is doing with this team from year one to year two. How do these players, especially players from last year's team, how do they develop? Because for so long under Archie Miller, the guys that had problems as freshmen had the same problems as when they were juniors or seniors, right? So what do we see from guys like Trace Jackson Davis? What do we see from some of these other players that have been on this team? Yeah, I think we're going to see some major development. Mike Woodson knows how to get guys in the NBA. He knows what the NBA is looking for. And if you can create NBA talented players along with some of those guys that already have the four- and five-star rankings coming in, there's no reason Indiana, maybe not this year, can't be a, a consistent Final Four contender for you know the next five to ten seasons at least. The Jamar Bates, George Geronimo, those are guys – Anthony Leal and Trey Galloway when he returns, are they making improvements? Because they have to make improvements yeah. for this team to get better. You know what Trace Jackson Davis brings. You know what Trace Thompson brings. Can he improve even? And maybe improve his outside shooting if he's going to continue to do that. Uh, but those guys have to improve for this team to improve. And then we have to see what the new pieces have added uh, with, with C.J. Gunn and, and Jalen Hitchfino, Malik Reynaud, Caleb Banks. Um all talented guys, so the, the, it looks great. I, I definitely think they're going to be a top three team without question. Uh, I, I don't know what Michigan's going to do. They have Hunter Dickinson. Illinois has really reloaded. I, I think that they're going to be a surprise team along with uh, up there with Indiana. But last year, I think it was just so important for Indiana to taste success at the end of the season, to taste tournament experience. John, how important is it? To get for them to have gotten that tournament experience last year. Well, yeah, none of those guys have played at all in uh, in the NCAA tournament. 
least they got a couple games there to, to kind of experience it so they know what that's like. Uh, you know, when Knight came in all those years ago, the second year he coached, uh, he had two classes. Freshman became eligible, the Buckner, Abernathy, Jim Cruz class, as well as myself and Steve Green. So he had, you know, an additional four, five, six players uh, that he had that first year. And he went to the Final Four his second year at Indiana in St. Louis. He lost to UCLA in the semifinals, and UCLA won the tournament that year. So the second year is a lot different than the first because the groundwork's laid, the players know what, what to expect. The new kids not only learn from the coaches, they learn from the players. Because the players now know the system. And sometimes it's easier for a player to learn uh, from a fellow teammate it is from a coach, but now you have both avenues that can do that instead of just one, which was, was last year. Having Trace Jackson Davis come back with his senior leadership and these new pieces that are very young and dynamic, I, I think this team is, is, is a top two Big Ten team, but we have to wait and see, of course. We don't know what everybody else has. Illinois is really reloaded, but from what they have, there's no reason they can't compete because last year, you can look back, there was probably five games, easily five games, that they, they should have won, not could have, should have won. So I think that with more experience, better talent, they don't lose those games this year. And maybe win those and some more, which that would be a pretty fantastic season. Absolutely. I think you're, you're right on there. They could have won more games, and that comes with that experience. Having Trace Jackson come back speaks a lot for the program <laughs> because, uh, you know, he could have jumped out, even though he didn't get to go to the NBA trial in Chicago. He could have gone and either got drafted or, or signed a free agent or just a lot of uncertainty in that scenario. Uh, and he's saying, well, if I come back to Indiana, you know, I'm going to be the star of the team. It's going to be my last year. I love the fans there. Uh, there's NIL money, so I'm not, you know, poor kid. Uh, why not play another year? This is going to be exciting. We're going to have a better team. We're going to go farther in the Big Ten. We're going to go farther in the tournament. I only have one. This year is fun. I'm going to do it again. And it's great to see that, really, uh, to, to see these guys come out. And it's going to be fun in Assembly Hall this year. Uh, it, it's, And then now we're looking at games at Kansas. Uh, this is this is, this is is what Indiana basketball was. You're going to have a, a game at, at the Fog Island Fieldhouse uh, against Kansas. You're playing Arizona in Las Vegas. Uh, you're playing Xavier. Uh it's just all kinds of everything is random, uh, and I think that that's going to show. I think the fans are going to really uh, show out because they haven't had been able to. And I know a lot of people have a championship. Had a chance to the excitement, Dustin. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a, a ton of excitement for. All of these games. If you're an Indiana fan, or if you're if you're an Indiana player, you want to be in these big time matchups. Now, the thing that you have to remember about these games is, you know, I don't want to say they don't matter, but you can't get too high if you win. You can't get too low if you lose because we've seen teams look at North Carolina last season. I mean, North Carolina kind of squeaked into the NCAA tournament, right? They didn't play great basketball until the NCAA tournament. So you have to be playing good basketball at the right time. You have to be able to learn things from those games. But in terms of the overall, the draw, yeah, I mean, you look at all the returning pieces that Indiana has to go to play, to, to be able to play teams like Kansas, especially on the road. Um, that's going to be an incredible atmosphere. I know it's not at home, but I think that that, it just gets fans more excited uh, and, and you're going to see a big turnout. Look, Assembly Hall is always uh, going to draw a, a big crowd. It's always it's one of the best environments in the Big Ten. Um, it, so I expect there's going to be a lot of excitement, a lot of returning pieces, and there, there's going to be the buildup. We haven't quite seen it yet, but at some point, probably in September or October, 
you're going to see ESPN probably they, they might consider Indiana a top 25 team. I mean, the media is already considering um, the Hoosiers as a potential Big Ten title contender. So there's going to be some amped up energy. There's going to be a lot of excitement. Indiana is going to have to deliver. Um, but it, again, you go back to those games. They're exciting. They're important. But and fans are going to overreact. You're not. You're never going to stop that. But the thing is, you got to remember. Don't get too high if you win. Don't get too low if you lose. Because we've seen Indiana in the past beat some really good teams and not make the NCAA tournament. We've seen last year Indiana lost some games, lost a game to Northwestern and ended up in the NCAA tournament and 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 uh, winning a game. So, and Jim just <laughs> Jim has dropped back out. So some technical difficulties today. But uh, I mean, I think. You go back. We go back to, to Mike Woodson and, and what he's been able to do in just such a short period of time. Obviously, a year now, about a year and a half. And I'm really interested to see what they can do from the development standpoint. I don't think that there's any doubt that he's able to recruit. He's done a fantastic job on the recruiting trail. He's he's changed over the um, his staff a little bit. And so I think there's a lot of reason for optimism in Bloomington, especially on the basketball floor. And it's it's. You know, to me, it's it's weird to me after covering Big Ten football for so long to be talking right now about basketball because I feel like a year or two ago we were talking about the excitement about Indiana football and what it might be able to do and in what bowl game are they going to be a Big Ten contender um, and Indiana basketball. I don't want to say it was an afterthought because obviously in the state Indiana basketball is never an afterthought. Um, but with Archie and and at some for some there was. Some consider the Mike Woodson hire to be a little bit underwhelming. So I think that there was a little bit of uh, just kind of a wait and see, whereas Indiana football, there was momentum heading in the right direction. Now we've gone back to the point where it's it's back to being basketball as the number one priority. And, and I think that there's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll wait and see now for the football season. So it's it's done a full circle and, and basketball is back in Indiana. And uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what they're able to do on the hardwood, but we got to wait uh, still a couple months. It's getting closer. 